worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. All creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. the 
close to the grave from the grave to the sky lord i lift your name on high lord i lift your name on high lord i love to sing your praises i'm so glad you're in my to save us You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross my debt to pay from the cross to the grave from the grave to the sky Lord I lift your name on darkness 
just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. Oh, I'm not here for When 
And I've just gone through the motions, I'm sorry And I just sang another song Oh, take me back to where we started I open up my heart to you Lord, I'm sorry When I've just gone through the motions I'm sorry When I just sang another song Oh, take me back to where we started I open up my heart to you I'm sorry When I've come with my agenda I'm sorry And I forgot that you're enough Oh, take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. And I just want you and nothing else. Nothing else, no. Nothing else will do. I just want you And nothing else, no And nothing else, Jesus Nothing else will do I just want you And nothing else, no And nothing else, no Nothing else will do I just want you Nothing else, no Nothing else, no Nothing else will do I just want you And nothing else, Jesus Nothing else, no Nothing else will do I'm caught up in your presence I just want to sit here at your feet And I'm caught up in this holy moment And I never want to leave And Jesus, you don't owe me anything. I'm caught up in your presence. I never want to
Okay, there we go. All right. Amen. Well, you can be seated. Amen. Amen. Uh, in case you can't tell, it's Labor Day weekend. And, uh, we are sorry that, you know, y'all couldn't go out of town, but we are glad you came. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, a lot of people got an opportunity to go travel. And um, actually, I'm leaving this afternoon. Um, I have a, I have a Rama meeting at Myrtle Beach. I know, but listen, it's, it's not all, anyway, it's, it's a meeting, <laughs> you know. It's, it's not fun and, you know, and surf and turf and all that, you know. Um, it's, it's a meeting, so um, it's, a, it's a busy meeting, so hallelujah. But I will be gone, you know, and um, glory to God, amen. Hallelujah. And the family will be here holding things. Down. I'll be back Wednesday. I'll be here. No, I won't. I will not be here Wednesday. Sorry. <laughs> I won't be, I'll be back. Well, I will be back Wednesday, but it won't be in time for church. <laughs> okay. I'll probably get in about midnight uh, Wednesday. Hallelujah. And that's just glorious. Sounds glorious, doesn't it? Hallelujah. And um, we do have an upcoming Wednesday night dinner, right? On the, the following Wednesday. Not this Wednesday, but the next one. Now, it did seem like somebody had semi-hinted at maybe Korean barbecue. <laughs> huh? What me? Way back at the beginning of the year when we were talking about that night, and you know, and uh, we were talking about what we were going to do, and somebody seemed to indicate they might be in the mood or the position or the timing to do Korean barbecue. Is that going to happen? <laughs> Not this Wednesday, the following one. He's got to figure out his schedule. I mean, if, if, listen, I'm not putting you on the spot. Can you do it? No, we, we don't. We don't know what our menu was because we were just. That was kind of one of those. You're working on Wednesday. Okay, so that won't work. Okay, we'll, we'll get it. Okay, so it will not be Korean barbecue. Kind of looking forward to see what that tastes like. It's good. Okay, all the kids. Go, yeah, it's good. All right. Okay. Well, then we won't be Korean, so we'll come up, we'll have a menu before next Sunday, right? We will have a menu before next Sunday, so we can announce it. Hallelujah. It, you know, just kind of, was, when we put the calendar out there, we kind of threw it out there, but I don't think he knew his calendar far enough, and then we changed it. It should have been, shouldn't have been next, that date. Should have been that date? It would, a second to, all right. I mixed up with the dates. We went back to, we went back, back to work at school, and it was like, okay, where am I? <laughs> it's, Hallelujah. And um, uh, we had some events this week at school that I, I can't even tell you what they were. Not out here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, so um, just lift your hands and say, God's good. <laughs> God is good. Nancy had a knee replacement surgery, and she's doing well. My, my, my wife's been contacting Julian, keeping up with that. And um, I, I don't know how I missed that. Um, and I think I knew, but I just somehow enough missed it that it was this week. And um, so I, you know, glad that she went well. And, um, you know, I think, I guess you've been taking care of her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Been a long while. <laughs> oh, me. <laughs> but you're trained. Yes, you are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Glory. All righty. Uh, so we're glad she's doing well and recovering well. Um, let's see what's going on. What's going on? We got, so we got the upcoming dinner. We have um, Jess and Kat will be ministering in the service on the 11th, next two weeks. So today's the 10th. On the, on the, on the um, 17th, they're ministering on the 17th. They're taking the morning service. And they're going to they're going to minister and share turkey and 
uh, everything. So you want to be here for that and, um, you know, give them some time. I'm knowing her, she'll have PowerPoints and pictures and, you know, <laughs> am I right about it? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Hallelujah. So they'll be taking the service on the 17th. Come early so we get started early. Um, I would I would bring uh, snacks. <laughs> they could go long. Okay. All right. Now I'm, I'm I'm teasing. So they'll be on that. Then we have um, uh, on the sixth, uh, seventh, and eighth of October, Shekinah Glory's coming. Now, I'm telling you, go tell some people and get in here for those services. Saturday, Friday night, Saturday night, 7.30, 7 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 7 o'clock. I keep wanting to say 7.30 for some reason. I don't know why. That's, we don't ever do church on 7.30. And then Sunday morning at 10.30. There you go. Uh, they'll be with us. You, I'm, I'm just honest with you. Uh, if you and, and I'm looking out here right now, I think there's a bunch of you who've never been there when they were in church. You want to be in those services. All right, hallelujah. Bring the kid. The kids need to be in those services. God, I'm telling you, they, they minister to, uh, to young people, and I mean, they are just I mean, minister to adults. They minister to young people. They minister to anybody that walks in the door. They are awesome. Hallelujah. And so um, it's going to be great teaching, great music, great ministry, and um, just bring people. Let's, let's pack it out. We'll go down the hallway with chairs. You know, if it gets that gets too much, we'll raise the windows, we'll raise the blinds, open the windows, and sit chairs outside. All right, we'll do. If we, we got we got enough chairs, we, we got a couple, you know, another hundred and thirty chairs we can put out. So, if we run down the sidewalks and whatever, we'll do it. All right, how do we got side doors? You can just run out there and have a Holy Ghost time right out there with them. You think I'm joking, don't you? No, I'm not. All right. So, and then the last Sunday of October, Saturday. Sunday, isn't it? Is our down east barbecue. So we're not going to get Korea, but we are going to get down east. Okay? Um, and fried chicken meal. Praise the Lord. So that's all coming up in the next you know, uh, 60 days. So it's, it's got a lot got a lot rolling. Let's be here. Let's be ready to go. Amen. All righty. Uh, it's time to give. If you can offer the envelope, um, grab it off the seat back in front of you. If you're giving electronically, you can go ahead and send that cash app or PayPal. Those. Um, Options are up on the screen and on the internet. So if you know, um, it is dollar sign Expedition Triad for Cash App, and it is give at expeditiontriad.org for PayPal. Okay? Why well, don't you use this one? Uh, we just, that's what we use. Okay? Um, I know there's, some, there's a bunch of different ones out there now. And, um, but we have found that these are the least expensive and most uh, easiest to use for us. So. Um, I, I don't want to use more expensive ones. Hallelujah. Y'all love Jesus? All right. So be here Wednesday night. Somebody be ministering. Come on. Y'all just don't have a sense of humor this morning. Come on, guys. All right. Amen. Jesus said, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Men will give unto your bosom. Amen? Hallelujah. Father, we thank you right now as people give and tithe, that heaven's windows are open unto them. Hallelujah. And you pour out blessings they don't have room enough to receive. We thank you they walk into land of blessing and overflow. Hallelujah. They lend to many and don't borrow. The devourer is rebuked for their sake. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Go ahead, Brother Joe. Receive the in-house. Offering, those of you out there, press your sin button. Glory to God. Amen, amen. And once again, amen. All right. Our younger people are dismissed. Joe like they got run over. I mean, he, he was getting me to get sandwiched. Tim coming from one way. Raleigh coming from the other. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, Chris shared this week on, on her Facebook page uh, about this, huh? 
Italian. Ooh, molto bene. Eh? Eh? Sì? Eh? It'd be stupefacente. Eh? Stupefacente means awesome. Hallelujah. I like stupefacente. Don't you? I like Italiano. Eh? You know? Spaghetti bolognese. That's the meat sauce stuff. I'm into the meat sauce stuff. Okay? I, I, we went to Italy uh, back, back when we were uh, doing the, the model Bible school down in um, Rome, and we had driven from, from, actually from Paris all the way down. We drove from Paris to Rome. That sounds like a long way, doesn't it? It's like driving here to Tulsa. It's about the same distance, same amount of time. But you got to see some. You didn't, want, you didn't look at the Arkansas rice patties. <laughs> um, you actually were going through, we were going through the, uh, the French and Italian Alps. Went through the Mont Blanc Tunnel and went through the little village of Chamonix and stuff. Beautiful stuff. Uh, but, uh, you know, the Italian food's regional. So if you're up in the Bologna region, you get, uh, you know, spaghetti bolognese, which is a meat sauce. You go to the other region, like you get around Mil Milano, Milan, Milano, um, and you just, when you say your spaghetti, you get diced tomatoes stewed in some type, you know, in oil, probably olive oil, and laid on top of your spaghetti. That's your spaghetti. Where's the meat? You know, I feel like I'm doing that commercial. <laughs> what is it? Was that ragu or whatever? You know, where's the meat? Wendy's. Wendy's, where's the beef? Where, where's the beef? <laughs> and then the woman got fired because she went to uh, one of the spaghetti sauces and said, I found it. <laughs> the old, they fired the old woman <laughs> as her advertiser. Hallelujah. So uh, we'll have spaghetti or Italian night. So that is going to include spaghetti. I can tell you that. And uh, we'll have, I'm sure, um, Alfredo sauce and um, salad and yada, 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 that kind of stuff. All right? So that is Wednesday week. Hallelujah. Amen and amen and amen. All righty. Open your Bibles, if you will, to the second book of Timothy in the third chapter. We thank all those who have joined online today. Some of our precious saints who were out actually on, a, on vacation have joined us the online. So thank you for joining us online. Hallelujah. Amen. Paul writing to the church, right, actually writing to his son in the faith, Timothy, um, a pastor, and um, needing guidance, you know, because he's a young minister. Paul is much, you know, he actually at one point Paul is referred to in one translation as Paul the aged. Um, Paul was getting older, okay? And he's imparting to his young ministry um, compadres with uh, wisdom from heaven. So this is a pastoral epistle. And um, giving him, trying to give him insight into how to govern the church or relate to the church and make them, have them prepared for what they're facing and have to deal with. Amen? Amen. All right. And so we've been, we've been ministering on the past uh, number of weeks along the lines of the Holy Spirit, different aspects of the Holy Spirit. And, um, you know, and we just got kind of wrapped up somewhat. Uh, the purpose of the baptism in the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost and, speak, and speaking in tongues. Um, I do believe we covered very well that, you know, that is a present and active part of the church age that is important for us to pray in the spirit, pray in tongues. Paul, when Paul was referring to praying in the spirit, he was referring to praying in tongues. Um, and so, uh, you know, combating arguments you may have heard that would be, um, uh, undermining to your faith in praying in the spirit today. Okay. Um, we talked about it's not a one and done. And what that leads us into is having a spiritual sensitivity. Amen? And an awareness. Uh, we could become very aware of our natural things. Okay? Uh, right now, I can tell you from looking at Facebook, people are very aware of the political scene. As a matter of fact, it's a consuming thing. People are consumed with the politics. 
and right in one sense, rightfully so, because of the evil that has taken place in politics. Um, I mean, you know, there's already the stirring of, oh, they've got another, you know, another variance coming. And they're talking about rebasking everybody and making everybody stay home and all this kind of stuff. Uh, wow, that so coincides with the next election cycle. You know, and uh, keeping everybody home because, you know, uh, you can campaign from a basement and be seen once every, you know, 45 days and win by 10 million votes. Never, you know, it just it, may, it makes no sense. OK, um, I'm not going to say I'm a conspiracy theorist, but something, you know, what would they used to say something rotten in Denmark or and I don't know where that came from. So like historic. Hamlet. OK, something's rotten in Denmark. So there we go. These these English people, you know, literate literature. <laughs> OK, all right. So something something was rotten in Denmark, you know, um, but now all of a sudden, you know, somebody said there is a new variant out there. It's called another con. <laughs> yeah, I thought that one was pretty good, too. But we in the church, now let, let's kind of let's, let's pull this back in. Um, we in the church have to understand the day we're living in. Amen? I want to read to you out of Weymouth, this translation, uh, chapter 3 through, well, I guess we're going to be reading a lot, all right, um, through, four, through chapter 4, verse 5. Okay? Well, not the whole thing. You, you can read the whole thing. I'm going to read verses 1 through 9 here, all right? Um, from Weymouth. Chapter 3, verses 1 through 9 out of the Weymouth translation, um, also called the New Testament in Modern Speech. All right. Um, this no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm, King Jimmy's over here. Um, but of this be assured that in the last days, grievous times will set in. For men will be lovers of self, lovers of money boastful, haughty, profane, they will be disobedient to parents, thankless, irreligious, destitute of natural affection, unforgiving, slanderers. They will have no self-control, but will be brooder, <laughs> brooder, brutal, opposed to godliness, treacherous, headstrong, self-important. They will love pleasure instead of loving God and will keep up a make-believe of piety and yet live in defiance of its power. Turn away from such people of this sort. Among them are, clu are included men who make their way into pr uh, private houses and carry off weak women as their prisoners. Women who, weighed down by the uh, burden of their sins, are led by ever-changing caprice. And they're always learning something new, and yet are never able to arrive at the real knowledge of the truth. And just as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so also these false teachers withstand the truth, being as they are, Men of debased intellects, didn't say they were stupid, debased intellects, and of no real worth so far as faith is concerned, for they will have no further success, for their folly will be as clearly manifest to all men as that of the opponents of Moses, Moses, Moses came to be. I don't know what it is with this R instead of S today. Okay. <clears throat> That's pretty... Um, the script statement it all this i would say we can look at that and look at our world today and go wow wow <coughs> there is such a parallel to what's taking a society today um with this and and, and here's the thing in particular with those who consider themselves highly educated the nations. Why? Because you see, um, I've said this 30 years ago. I've been in, like, there, there's, a, there's a college town not too far from here. And when you drive into the town, 
you can sense that educational spirit. And, and it's, not, it's not that they're at higher learning. There is a debaseness that coincides oftentimes with the intellect, intellectual spirit. Why? Because men began to assume, because they're highly intelligent, that, um, that they almost take on a God persona. They know everything. And then, because they don't accept the reality of a higher power, then they begin to explore the expanse of their mental and physical um, attributes, ultimately becoming that uh, with what we refer to as an amoral status. There is no morality. You, you declare uh, your morality. Uh, we also use the term in the past, situational ethics. Your ethics are based on the circumstance at the time. Okay? Um, and then I say the theme song for that is that old song that, uh, uh, listen, I, used, I mean, I used to love the song. But, you know, I got saved, and I can't, I can't love the song. You know? You know, there's a song called, If You Can't Be With The One You Love, Honey, Love The One You With. That's about as situational ethics as you'll ever get. Okay? Oh, you're on a trip to Europe. Can't be with your wife. Oh, go find somebody in the, yeah, out in the uh, Moulin Rouge, Rouge district of Paris. <laughs> okay? The red light district. Okay? Why? Because if you can't be with the one you love, love the one you're with. You know? Why? Because it's the circumstance. My ethics are based on my circumstances at our situation at the time. Well, see, that, where does that come from? It doesn't come from the Bible. Are you all here? It doesn't come from the morality of God. Hello? Now, we as Christians look at the things going around us and you're going, oh, my goodness, this thing is, you know, I mean, this is going down the toilet. I mean, this thing is in trouble, yada, yada, yada. However, we're having people stand up in pulpits under the guise of a minister with a man having the first husband sitting on there as the first husband of the church. But, you know, there's this term that's kind of come out in the past few years that's been kind of spread into the church. and It's the first lady of the church and that kind of stuff. And, you know, I mean, okay. You know. I don't know about all that, you know, and I, we don't get uptight if somebody says that. I don't, I, you know, we don't, we, we don't re really refer to it that way, my wife and I. Um, but people do it. Well, now you're getting first husbands, and the pastor is a male. Okay? We're having openly homosexual ministers being ordained by their denominations. Well, there's a problem here. I mean, we're having, the, the Episcopalian church is having a major uproar within their ranks so much so that a good number of um, congregations and ministers have left the American now uh, this is a term you we don't use but they use it they've left the American communion and are actually joining the African communion who are very conservative so they're joining in another country on another continent because they are staying in line with Scripture versus what's taking place in America. All right? Now, here's the sad thing. We've, had, we've just had a major upheaval in the, in the Methodist church. Methodist, Methodists are splitting. And uh, why? Because you've got Methodists who, who are ordaining gay clergy, et cetera, and so on. And there's a number of Methodists who are, you know, Wesleyan-type Methodists. They really believe the Bible. Okay? And uh, they split. And they it had, a, it had to have a big conference and, you know, being able to take the assets and, you know, they keep their buildings and all this kind of stuff. It's, and when it comes down to it, a lot of it's about money, you know. I mean, in some, in some places, they, people, churches have had to leave their, their organizations or whatever and lose everything, their buildings, everything, because of the way they're, that denomination is set up. It owns the property. Okay. So your congregation, if they don't want to go with them and their 
perversion, they got this, they have to leave everything they sowed money into and everything they put into and leave and go somewhere else. But what do you do? You have to, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Okay. Now here's the problem. If we don't, if we, we have gotten so many people in so many churches to the point they have no spiritual discernment. Hello? We got congregations all over the country, you know, independent churches, people in churches, and all of a sudden the, the pastor gets up and says things about that um, we, we will perform homosexual marriages. We won't. Ever. Send me to jail. I ain't doing it. Under any circumstance. Why? Because we believe the scripture teaches clearly that marriage is between a man and a woman. And one of each at the same time. That's it. We're not Mormons with 65. Okay? Hello? And what man will be that crazy? <laughs> I wish I had a camera on that. <laughs> Oh, me. My wife's not in here, so I can say, you should, Tom, come on down here. Let's pray for you, brother. <laughs> take him. Take him. <laughs> Lord, help me get this back. Guess on the other side, how many women want to have 65 of you living in the same house? Yeah, there you go. All right. So you're kind of in agreement. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. It was just his, his he kind of, whatever she. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Help me get back to where I was before that. Yeah. So we got churches that are, that are embracing the lifestyle. That the scripture clearly declares is sin. Now we love sinners. We do not. We do not hate any anybody in the alphabet group. LBGTQ plus, binary, non-binary, X, Z, we, whatever. Hello? We don't hate them. We have an answer for their problems. Amen. And it's Jesus, and it's Jesus, it's the word, it's in some cases, casting devils out. They need deliverance. But we love them. But we do not condone nor accept or embellish or nurture that lifestyle. We don't accept it. You call me a hater, I don't care. I don't hate you. Because me telling you that you're okay and you're light, that's great. Keep living that way. And you go to hell because I didn't tell you the truth. See, the real person that hates you is the one telling you you're right. They're willing to let you go to hell so they can be cool. And that's the truth. Now, so the church has so drifted from spiritual understanding and spiritual sensitivity that when something goes on in their church by leadership and they, they don't even see it as wrong because they're just being led like sheep, there's a problem. You have to be spiritually sensitive. So if one day Pastor Ed gets up and says, like, the, and I'm just going to use an example um, of what happened here in our own area a number of years ago, <clears throat> says he's got him a 16-year-old babe that his wife has said it's condoned for him to get married, but if it's against the law to have polygamy, they're going to be married in the sight of the Lord, and her parents okayed it. Where's your spiritual sensitivity? Hello? See, what you, the whole, that whole church should have done was hollered out, Ichabod, and got up and left. Hello? See, he was in the gym, lifting weights, getting in shape. He was in his 40s. Wife had gotten, you know, kind of like the uh, roughed up luggage on an airplane. And he's going to give him some young chick in the church. And then start preaching uh, messages along the lines that it was okay for him to have more than one wife. And not just another wife, a young one. 
that I, without parental consent would be um, uh, statutory rape. It's going to get him a babe. And the, the church just stayed there and supported him. How can anybody with any ounce of spiritual sensitivity not say that was wrong? Now, this, is, this was on the news. This was, I mean, they were, they were all over this area back then. I mean, it was coming out because he was up in, um, they were up across the Virginia line area somewhere, not about 30, 40 miles away. Now, now that's, that's blatant. That's blatant. Wouldn't, it? wouldn't that be a blatant example? Well, what happens when pastors start getting up and saying, um, I'm wrong, tithing's not for the church? Where's your spiritual sensitivity? We have, you, I'm not God. I'm not your hardcore hammer authority of life. If I say it, that's the way it is. It goes in your life. If I preach it, it's the truth, and you can't believe anything else. Because you know what? I can be wrong. And I can be not walking in light in that area and preach something that's really off. And you need to have enough spiritual sensitivity to recognize it. Isn't that right, Brother Benny? I've been, I've been in church before, and the church, for whatever reason, the pastor wanted to, you know, be recognized not as one of those, you know, Holy Ghost, Pentecostals, but to have a lot of intellect. And so he kind of connected with some people and started bringing kind of an intellectual approach to the gospel in. And in doing so, began to undermine the teachings that the church was built on. Even to the point that they were opposed to, really what I would say was wholesome doctrine. And I'm in the church. Now, it wasn't long before I ended up leaving, I was, you know, but they started moving in this direction. Well, I knew, I'm like, that's not right. There's something wrong with that. There's something not accurate about this. Now, I didn't get up from the church and go, oh, he's a false prophet. He's, I didn't, you know. But I had enough spiritual sensitivity to say, oh, I'm, shut, I'm shutting that down in my mind. I'm shutting that down in my life. I'm not, I'm not receiving that. I can't. Okay? Um, why? Because my spirit was saying, eh, eh, eh. I had a guest speaker come in one time. I didn't know anything about him. And listen, this happens. I've, I've had speakers in our church that I'll never have walk in the doors again. Ever. Hello? Why? I made a mistake in letting them come. I had to tell the congregation, so-and-so said some things that I disagree with, and, you know, I was wrong. <laughs> to even let them do that. Okay? Never. Unless Jesus appears to me with a flaming sword and says, Thou shalt. Then I'm going to ask him to prove he's Jesus. Okay? Maybe he'll say, well, he repented. He was found out it's wrong. He said, he's got it corrected. Okay. All right? But we were not, a guy was coming in, and I saw, and I happened to, for me, on one, on one side, I think I, I, I worked out real good because I had planned a vacation at that time. They announced they were bringing him in, and so I wasn't there. But just to mention that that person's name, something on the inside of me went, Eeeh! and I came back from vacation. Oh, he was awesome. He was amazing. He was this. He was that. Eeeh! I couldn't get excited about it. It just did. I mean, something was just all going off on the inside of me going, Eeeh! Whoop, 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 whoop. stay away, stay away, stay away. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Um, a friend of mine came into our church after, we, after I left, I was pastoring, and, and we were, he was sharing. He used to travel with the guys, helping him when he was young in ministry. And he quit doing that because the guy made a pass at him. Oh, yeah. Why don't you come sit over here in the hotel? Guys don't do that. But just let me tell you, guys don't look at another guy and say, why don't you come sit right over here? 
Uh uh-uh. Are you here? I, I can tell you for a fact, guys don't do that. We don't invite another guy to sit on the bed with us. Just telling you. Well, he got revealed later. He was hopeless. He, he had been, uh, he, this guy actually started pastoring a church and got found out he had been in a homosexual relationship with a church member for over three, three or four months. Oh, years before, I was getting, Eek! see, when you're spiritually sensitive, you'll pick up on stuff. Now, sometimes, a good number of times, you can't say anything about it. When you get something, you can't go just spread that all over the place. Okay, number one, um, in some cases, you'll be, you'll be criticized and rendered a, you know, lunatic. He's got this big ministry. He travels here. He travels there. He does this. He does that, you know. Big don't mean right. We got people teaching stuff operating from debased intellect. People teaching stuff and doing things, not by God, but they've been marketed well. They they may they are very they are very very good orators. They're very convincing. They use enough Christianese to make it sound spiritual. But your spirit has to cut through all of that. So your spirit has to cut through all of that and not get caught up with the persona. See, the real danger to the church today is not a bunch of heathens. We know. I mean, when... when the purple-haired, bolted, tattooed person gets up and starts cussing God. You're not persuaded at all to curse God. Now, I'm just using extreme. Now, on the other side of that, we love those people. And if we can minister to them and get them to Jesus, we want to. We don't want to cast them aside. Just, you know, they, they've been controlled by demons. But what my point is, you're not going to go, oh, man, they got a point. I, I got to cuss God. But when Slick Minister shows up, and he's got all the television screens and the PowerPoints and the, you know, uh, of course, a few years ago, it was bed head with the skinny jeans, and then they went to t t men in tunic tops with the, you know, the cuts and the swaying, fl uh, floating, you know, end on it and all this kind of stuff. Gag a maggot. <laughs> I'm just sorry, you know. I mean, skinny tight jeans. I tried on a pair of bought a pair of pants the other day. Bought, they were a different brand, but they were the same size as the ones that I wear. So I thought, okay. You know, tried to put them on this morning, and the leg went in on the calf, and I went, this ain't working. <laughs> they were the right size, except the cut was the new look. Have you, seen, have you ever noticed a look, new look for men's suits? The pants are too tight. The coats are too short and too tight. That's the new look. Huh? And no socks. <laughs> now, when I wear my uh, Uggs, I don't wear socks. You're not supposed to wear socks for those, okay? But um, the material, you're not supposed to look because it matches up the material in them. All right. But I'm talking about the, not even like casual, the, the suits. I mean, you, you, they got them on television. They can't even pull the arms around like this because it's so tight and short. And they're like, wow. But anyway, they dress like that. They come show it up. You know, they got all the cool, they got the multimedia. They got the light shows. They got this. They got that. They perform. And they use scripture. But it's a prop to their performance. In a lot of cases. What about in here? Are you listening down in your spirit? I mean, can you turn off the visuals and hear from the inner man? If not, then this is what they, they've tried to do. They've tried to overstimulate people, the, the devil, using people, false ministers, have tried to overstimulate people with the external 
to the point they're not listening from the heart. They're not hearing the voice of God. The teacher is drowned out. Not the teacher person, the teacher of the church, the Holy Ghost. Has been drowned out. Because we're so stimulated. You know? I mean, we got, you know, the, we got the big screens behind the ministry. And, and see, then when somebody makes it successful, everybody wants to copy it and everybody wants to do it. And, and, and on one side of the coin, I kind of halfway semi get it. But then I come back and I want to say, what's the effect of this long term? Oh, we're cool. Okay. Now, we do have screens up. We put scripture up. But we don't, you know, we're not trying to, you know, saturate you in the experience, the electronic ministry experience. Because you have to hear from God. And if we stimulate your mind so much that you can't hear from God, there's a problem. If you're so caught up with the activity that when the person speaks and they put false things out there, but it has to be right because, listen, I mean, they're, they got bad head and skinny jeans. And only somebody anointed by the Holy Ghost today can do that. Y'all get what I'm saying? I'm not going to say all the, that every time you see that it's automatically wrong, that they're of the devil. That, but I'm trying to say, let's step back and take a look at everything and make sure that we are spending time with God, ministering unto the Lord, getting into the Spirit so we can discern things. Now, there is not a gift of discernment. There's a gift of the, of the discerning of spirits. That's something different. Uh, I grew up in church. That, you know, everybody thought they had the gift of discernment. You know, and we really found out it was a gift of judgment. Okay? And so... To be now, see why is it important to be spiritually discerning? Because then, if you don't, if you're not spending time with the Lord, then whatever you think about something, you may feel like I don't like that. Then you get you'll get over the judging, and it's not that's not discerning with your spirit. You're not being spiritually sensitive. You didn't you just didn't like them because you didn't like the way they looked. Now, here's the thing: you could be wearing skinny jeans, bad head, you know, tunic top, and be anointed. I get you know, I'm sorry to say, I guess you can be. My point of all that is we are so caught up now with all of this showmanship that people don't even bother to listen down on the inside and hear the Spirit confirming or going, eh. That's a dangerous place for us to get. Now, let's, let's take this over to the natural. Um, over three years ago now, we were given a mask mandate. Everybody started wearing masks. Shut the restaurants down. Got to stay sick. We got people riding around in cars with a full face shield, a mask on, the windows up, because they're not going to get the corona. There was a song came out by uh, the... Deacon something Warren or something, whatever. I forgot his name now. Shan's going to be happy. I forgot his name. He had songs that don't let the corona get on you. <laughs> he did church style. Okay. Um, I'll find out the name again and get it because I pick her. Shannon hates it because I sang it so much to her. She'd get in her head. She couldn't forget it. I would send her clips to the song on a text message and she'd open it up and it'd start singing. And she'd, not daddy! <laughs> Hallelujah. The whole world went crazy. Everybody's wearing a mask. Only to realize, but nobody would accept it. I gotta wear the mask. That the mask that you were giving you could not filter the virus. The holes in the, you know, in the material were three, four, five times, whatever, bigger than the virus. That's like trying to stop a mosquito with chain link fencing. Hello? Go put chain link fence on your windows at your house to keep the mosquitoes out. Now, down in Hoboken, North Carolina, that works. Because they sound like B 52s coming in for a landing when they fly by your head. I mean, it's a big skeeters down there. Hallelujah. God told my father law one time, he said, uh, 
Now, can you put some uh, chain link fence on my windows? Because he's an electrician. He's just he's gonna mess with him. He said, "What for?" He said, "I'm trying to keep the mosquitoes out." He said, "What good is that gonna do?" He said, "I'm not worried about the ones that can get through. It's the ones that can that, that can't. I'm worried about because they're so big." But I was I was working down there one day and and I was I was, I was up under a mobile home doing something and I heard this. I'm kidding. Planes coming in for a landing. Huge. All right? So the whole, everybody, you get around people. You got to have that mask on. Really? I mean, you get turned in by the mask Nazis. I was at school and had a mask Nazi go to the principal about me not wearing my mask. Because I would take it and I go crazy with it on just about. I mean, I'm, I can't take it. I'm breathing the hot air. I mean, I start getting claustrophobic with that on my face like this. I'm, I'm just, I can't take it. So I would, I would fix it so I could breathe. I would pinch it up and you know, get it up so I could get cool air in. The mass Nazi went to the principal. He, you know, he said, Mr. can you? I said, look, I get claustrophobic. I said, I, I, can't, I can't do this. And um, Nobody should you know, be forced to wear that kind of stuff. But everybody did it. And everybody thought, they thought I wore the mask. And, and they kept getting it. Hello? People kept getting it with the mask on. People got worse when they got the COVID vaccine. Now they want you to take the, the, the booster and the booster and the booster. I didn't take it. Whatever you did, that's your business. <clears throat> I didn't take it. You know? If you wanted to take it and you were fine with it and you... Great. I mean, it's like if you go get it, I'm not going to say you're wrong, go get a flu shot. But we were being forced into stuff. Destroyed hundreds of thousands of cattle because the food supply chain was messed up because nobody was buying food. They weren't going to restaurants. They, they controlled that whole thing, the psyche. They gained control of people's psyche and controlled them with it. I still see people wearing masks. You need for your body to build up immunity. Okay? I'm not going to put, you know, so, and they're trying to destroy it. They're trying to say that no one's coming. We're going to have to go back and all that stuff. And uh, I think they're going to have an uprising if they do it this time. I, I think there's so many people say, I ain't doing it. You, no, 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 not, 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 not this time. Not this time. Uh-uh. Um, and the natural that happens now. Now we get into the churches. We get teaching on submission and authority. And I believe in submission and authority. I believe there's a biblical submission to authority and obe obeying those with the rule over you. But you do not override the Spirit of God speaking to you. He's the, the, the preacher, those with the rule, are not God. They are not infallible, including myself. I put myself right at the front of the line. I'm not infallible. I expect you to do the things necessary to be able to hear the voice of God say, leave that alone. Amen. Well, Pastor Ed, I'm not infallible. Now, I will preach strong. I'll preach, you know, um, like I believe it, because when I'm preaching, I believe it. Amen. I've been wrong once, but I found out I was wrong about being wrong. No. You as a Christian must do the things necessary to be spiritually discerning. When we preach the services, go get your Bible and study it out. Pray and let the Holy Ghost teach you from those things. He may say, you know, um, I know he said this, but, you know, Study this here. Get clarity on it. Make sure you interpret it right. Da -da 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 -da. I, don't I do not expect you to take what I say as the truth without you finding out for yourself. Why? Because you're not going to win a battle going, well, Pastor Ed said. That's not going to get you anywhere. That won't even get you a Starbucks coffee. Unless you add $10 to it. And the only reason you got this is because you paid for it. 
to minister to the Lord, get into the presence of God, hear the Spirit, discern things, be aware. And I'm not, I'm not afraid for you to go, I, 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 I don't see that. Okay, fine. Here's what I will tell you if you come to me and say, I, I don't see that. Okay, you go find the scriptures that support what you're saying versus what I said so that you'll know and you'll have a basis of argument or, or position. Because if I was wrong and you could show me from the scriptures, <laughs> you know, maybe well, you know, I'm, I'm going to take that into consideration and go study it myself. See, see what that, how that impacts what I was teaching. We're living in a day with all this stuff's going on. You got to be sharp. And now, when we get we're getting ministers who are who are brought in who are teaching things that are causing confusion, but the church is so messed up in so many places that there's no spiritual discernment. They're just taking a hook, line, and sinker. Here, here's one of the here's one of the qualifiers for uh, gay ministers and gay marriages and so forth. Well, everybody needs love. That's not love. Inordinate affection and lust is not love. Are you here? That is not love. Now here you go home. So, minister to the Lord. L do listen to those of you in the Lord. Amen? And be a Berean. One of the biggest things that's going to help you be a good Christian is be a Berean. That makes you noble. These are more noble than those of Thessalonica. And that they receive the word with all readiness of mind and search the scriptures daily to see whether those things were so. That makes you a Berean. Now it says there, these were, they were in Berea. Okay. They were more noble. Because I want you, God wants you, to be in tune with the Spirit. So that somebody gets knocked off the way and starts teaching stuff that's not biblical, you are in tune and can make that adjustment and go, I can't go there. Hello? Um, I'm going to close with this. I'm going to close with this. There's a major Pentecostal denomination. Well, that's the symbols of God. They were one of the, if not, they, they were, um, Church of God in Christ was really like the original Pentecostal denomination, uh, primarily African-American. When the white people came to me, they had to sit at the back. Okay? And um, the leaders of, of all the white guys coming went to the leaders of the Church of God in Christ and said, look, um, you guys have, you have something here we want to we be a part of, but we want to start our own you know, you some racism, you know, and the mixing the race was still not going good. And they blessed them and said, yeah, go ahead. So they started the AG. Okay. About four or five years ago, the, at the general conference, it was going to be tried. They were try, had a group of people trying to bring to the table that speaking in tongues was no longer the sign of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The whole denomination was founded on that. And, and uh, my, my pastor was not happy because they, they grew up AG. Went, to the AG, went to the AG school. And they were, uh, um, his, uh, his wife's dad was an AG pastor. Um, dad Hagen was an AG pastor. Until, you know, as he, as he likes to say, um, um, he was going to go out and go to the churches other than just the AGs. And they told him he couldn't do it. He'd lose his papers. And he said, but God told me to go. So even his overseer said, I don't agree with it, but that's, you know, that's the denominational rules. And so the only reason he turned in his papers was because they wouldn't let him go to the other churches that weren't AG. They didn't want to go into Foursquare or Pentecostal Holiness or, you know, any, just, just AGs. They've changed that since then. They, you know, they realize, you know, that's, that's, that's not right. Okay. Go ahead. So they, they, they were getting an upheaval in the whole denomination because this one little group wanted to, you know, they were probably teaching their churches. That's not the sign. That's, not, well, that, that's what you signed on for. Okay? And it is a sign. We just got through proving that. All right? So my goal is your pastor. 
is not to make you a Taylorite. Honestly, I don't want to be the God of your life. If I say it, it's infallible, it is the tr truth, and that's all there is to it. That's too much power of your, over your life. Why? Because then I can go say, go take all the money out of your bank account and bring it and give it to me personally. And, God, and you'll be blessed because you did that. I could get rich. That's too much power. But are you going, that don't bear witness with my spirit. Amen. Don't let someone prophesy your money out of your bank account into their hands. The Lord shows me you've got a nice chunk of money in the bank. And if you, you want to be like Barnabas, go sell all that you have and give to the poor, and I'll make you even richer and make you greater. And uh, he wants you to sow it into my life. Run. Amen. Be discerning. Hear from God. Walk with God. Stay into it. Learn from the pastor. Learn from the ministry. Search the scriptures. But also be discerning by being in his presence, hearing his voice. So he can, he can stop you from making a foolish mistake. One more before I close. Knew a man, a woman. She was 20 years older than him, and they were already old. He was like 37, she was 57, and um, got to pray in together. And she started prophesying. That ought to tell you something, that they were supposed to get married. Yeah. She started prophesying they were supposed to get married. And guess what he did? He married her. Guess what happened? It didn't last. See, when people start prophesying stuff to you that directly, personally, completely benefits the person doing the prophesying, you better be hearing from God if they're telling you to do something. Well, how are you going to know? I mean, you could go out there and say, I mean, you can find somebody in church and go, oh, well, hey, they're hot. The Lord says, leave your husband and come unto me. You better not do that. I mean, you ought to have the common sense not to follow that one. But on the other hand, if you're so under control of that and you're not spiritually discerning, pe people do stuff. They do stupid stuff. Just because somebody presented themselves as some spiritual leader. Your number one spiritual leader is the guidance of the spirit in your heart. Being led by the Holy Ghost. Amen? Grow up, be mature. In Jesus' name. Amen? I know that wasn't a real, you know, whatever. It was too, it was too deep, heavy-ish kind of thing. That's wisdom from heaven that you need to know. It's safe. I said it's safe. Father, we thank you for this service. Thank you for teaching us how to be mature and, and sensitive to your voice so that we can grow in the grace of God. We can be effective in the earth. Our lives will be blessed and we'll be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us today. God bless you. Till we meet again, remember, remember these words from 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4, that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Till we meet again, we love you. God bless you. L hope to see you sometime soon here in person at Expedition Church of the Triad. God bless you. Have a great day.